What if I told you you could be getting more performance out of your PC without spending an extra cent? Well, you might think that I am crazy, but I'm not. And in this beginner guide, I'll be showing you how to overclock your CPU. So first to answer the question that's on a lot of you guys' minds is, is it dangerous? Am I gonna ruin my CPU by overclocking it? And the answer is no. I mean, yes, it can be dangerous, but if you're safe and you're careful and you don't do anything too crazy, you're not gonna ruin anything. And a lot of these CPUs are capable of going at much higher frequencies and being completely stable for years and years and years. So I'm gonna be overclocking my AMD Ryzen 1700 CPU, but there's many CPUs that can be overclocked out there and this process will work the same on all of them. Just make sure that you have a CPU that's capable of being overclocked. It has to be an unlocked CPU. So do a Google search and make sure that your CPU is overclockable first, and also make sure that your motherboard is capable of overclocking. Some motherboards have more or less features for overclocking, so just make sure that your motherboard can overclock and uh, you'll be good to go. Now, not all CPUs overclock just as well as the next. Some chips will overclock better than others, and this is just called the silicone lottery. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't get lucky, but in general, most chips can be overclocked to a certain degree. Speaking of degree, you'll wanna make sure you have a good cooler on your CPU to keep the temperatures low in an acceptable range. I have a decent H115i Corsair all-in-one cooler. That's a little overkill. You don't need something that nice to do some overclocking. But if you're running a stock cooler, I would recommend getting something a little nicer to overclock with because a stock cooler is really not going to give you acceptable temperatures once you start boosting your voltage a little bit. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't like dealing with a few crashes or a boot loop, for example, then maybe overclocking isn't for you. There is going to be times when you have a crash while you're kind of tuning your overclock and it's going to be part of the process. You know, you don't know how far you can push it until your computer starts crashing. So you can't panic about a blue screen or a freeze or a lockup or whatever. You can always just reset your BIOS and start over. And that's the process of it. Which brings me to the next point. I like to put the BIOS for my motherboard on a USB thumb drive, just in case I need to reflash my BIOS. Occasionally on certain motherboards, you might have a problem in your BIOS with an overclock that didn't work right, and then you just wanna reset your BIOS. So I recommend downloading the BIOS from your motherboard manufacturer's website, sticking it on a USB drive just to be safe. Most likely you won't have to deal with this, but just to be safe, it's a good way to uh, protect yourself. So now that you know what to look out for and what to be prepared for, let's start by taking some benchmarks on our computer before we do any overclocking so we have something to compare it to once we're done overclocking. So first off, I recommend downloading Hardware Monitor. This is gonna work for monitoring the temperatures on your CPU. You can see that right now I'm running around 29 to 30 C, which is very cool, and that is due to my um, all-in-one cooler. But this is gonna work to kinda get a temperature of before and after we overclock, just to make sure that we're still in the acceptable range. So definitely get hardware monitor. And now first we'll be running the Cinebench R15 benchmark. This is just kind of a good blanket benchmark that's gonna work well for CPUs with multi-cores and stuff. So we're gonna be running that. Then I'm going to run the Time Spy. This is a good gaming benchmark as it takes uh, a lot of gaming aspects and benchmarks your graphics card and your CPU. I'm gonna mainly be looking at the CPU for this video. But uh, it will give us a good accurate reading on what we're getting from our CPU. And then I'm going to finish with rendering the Blender BMW benchmark scene here. Um, this is one that is very common in the Blender community, so all you Blender nerds will enjoy seeing how much more performance you can get out of your CPU for uh, rendering in Blender 3D. Okay, so this is the multi-thread Cinebench R15 benchmark, uh, finishing up here. Okay, so we got 1363. Okay, now I'm running the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, and we'll see what kind of CPU results we get from uh, this test. And in the Time Spy benchmark, we got a CPU score of 16,902. Okay, and the Blender benchmark here just finished up with a time of 1 minute and 20 seconds. And throughout all of these benchmarks, the hottest temperature we ever saw was 46C. Okay, now that we have a baseline for the benchmarks, you can go ahead and restart your computer or shut down. Go ahead and shut down your computer and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so you can power back on now and you're gonna wanna tap the delete key multiple times on your keyboard to make sure you enter the motherboard's BIOS. Not the backspace key, but the delete key. Okay, so now in our BIOS, you're gonna look for the CPU multiplier setting. And that's most likely going to be under the advanced frequency settings. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go to advanced frequency settings. And here you can see the CPU clock control. Now, this is going to be a little different on every single BIOS, but um, they're all going to have some of the same features. So you might need to reference your manual a little bit to find out what they call it. But basically, the CPU clock is what you're going to be looking for, and it will be set to auto for now. So the way overclocking works is basically your CPU and motherboard run at a blank speed of 100 megahertz multiplied by your CPU clock ratio. So your CPU clock ratio is how you tell it how fast to run, basically. And you can see right now it's multiplied by 30 to give us a 3 gigahertz speed. So to overclock, all we have to do is change the clock ratio multiplier, and then this number multiplied by 100 will be what our overclock is. Now, if you're going to be upping the gigahertz, you're most likely going to be having to increase the CPU voltage. Now, this is going to be under our voltage settings. I'm going to tab down to here, tap down to our voltage settings here, and here you can see that our CPU vCore is currently set to auto and running at about 1.225 volts. Now, we can get some overclock without even touching this, just leaving it completely auto. I think we can get some overclock out of this. So let's go ahead and see what we can get without even touching the voltages. So I'm gonna go to the frequency settings here, and I'm gonna to go to my clock ratio, and I'm going to change that. Let me hit the plus key here, and I'm gonna see if I can't get something. All right, we'll see if I can't get 3.6 gigahertz without touching the, the uh, voltages at all. I'm not gonna to be touching any sort of overclocking on the memory in this video, just the CPU. And I'm going to leave the voltage at auto, but I will change, let me hit escape here to jump back, in the voltage settings, there is an option called load line calibration, CPU vCore load line calibration. And this will basically give your CPU a little bit of range. It will basically allow it to increase it and decrease it a little bit, depending on if your computer needs it, just to kind of stabilize overclocking a little bit. Now, every motherboard will probably have a setting like this. It may be called, again, something a little bit different, but basically look for the LLC load line calibration. And I'm gonna change this to extreme by hitting the plus key there. And this will just give my vCore a little bit of room to play with, basically. If it needs more voltage, it'll give it a little bit more voltage. On certain CPUs and motherboards, you might have to disable any power saving features built into your CPU or BIOS. So you would wanna go to your advanced settings and find anywhere where you have like the cool and quiet function and the boost things and maybe turn those off. I haven't needed to turn them off in my BIOS, but it's a possibility that you might need to disable these features to get an overclock on your CPU or motherboard. I'm going to go over to my save and exit and hit save and exit, confirm. Okay, so in our OS now, it seems like it's booted up perfectly fine. I'm just going to log in here. And I like to use Cinebench R15 to do my sort of testing because it's a quick benchmark. All right, so that finished without any issues. You can see that we got a score now of 1511, so 1511. That's quite a bit better over the 1360 that we got before. And the temperatures never went above 51 degrees Celsius, which is very acceptable. So uh, that's pretty awesome without touching any of the voltages, just the auto voltage settings a little bit we are getting uh, a decent overclock. So let's push it further. Okay, so back in our BIOS, I'm going to try, well, let's see if I can get away with 3.8 gigahertz. So adding 200 megahertz to the clock, um, this this might give us issues without adding any more to the, uh, the vCore, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna try it. We'll see if we can get away with that and auto voltages. So going back and saving. We'll see what happens. Okay, so back in my OS, I have hardware monitor open again and Cinebench, trying it for the third time, and let's see what happens. Okay, so at this point, we got a black screen. That means that we need to go back into the BIOS and add some more voltage for overclock to be stable. Now, if you run into an issue where you can't access your BIOS due to your overclock, what you'll wanna do is reset your CMOS on your BIOS. There is usually a button, but if you can't find it, access your motherboard's manual and they'll tell you the location of your CMOS reset button there. Okay, so back in the BIOS now, I just powered on and powered back on, no issues. And uh, I'm just going to try giving it a little bit more voltage. So dropping down to my voltage settings here, going for the vCore. I'm going to change it now off of auto. And uh, I'm going to give it, 
Well, let's try 1.35 volts. That's a pretty safe voltage amount, and uh, it should give us some room for more overclocking. So I'm going to try 1.35, leaving everything else on auto, and uh, we'll see what we get now when we uh, save and exit. Okay, so running Cinebench again now at 1.35 volts, 3.8 gigahertz. You can see that our voltages here are sitting right around 1.35, um, fluctuating a little bit because of that low line calibration setting. So sitting at about 1.35, and uh, you can see that Cinebench has just finished successfully. And this time we got a score of 1597. So a bit better than our 3.6 gigahertz. And uh, now that we have more voltage added to it, let's see if we can push it a little further. Okay, so now I'm going to try increasing the frequency settings a bit here. I'm going to take it from 3.8 and well, let's go 3.9. Um, that would be a decent overclock and uh, we'll see if that can work. And it looks like Cinebench is going to finish again at 3.9 gigahertz now, 1.35 volts. And it did, and you can see we're now in the 1600s with our score. We got 1635, so that's not bad. At just 1.35 volts, and our max temperature was 65 degrees Celsius, so very acceptable and uh, a decent score. But because I like pushing things to the limit, I'm going to see if I can't go further. Let's see if we can't get 4 gigahertz. Okay, so back in the BIOS, let's set our CPU clock ratio all the way up to 4 gigahertz. This is where things start to get a little bit... Uh, a little bit crazy and um, I'm gonna go ahead and change my voltage settings I think I'm gonna need about 1.45 volts now 1.45 is pretty high but if you have a decent cooler it should still be okay okay so at 4 gigahertz let's see if it's stable with 1.45 volts 4 gigahertz this should be our uh, our goal and I'm going to go ahead and save exit okay so running at 4 gigahertz at 1.46 volts we have just had a successful cinebench score of 1689 not too shabby so that's coming from 1363 not bad now this just because it finished a cinebench doesn't mean that it's completely stable we're gonna have to run some more testing um, ADA64 is a popular application for testing your uh, your CPU overclock as it kind of stress tests the CPU a lot and uh, will give you a, uh, a good idea if it's going to be stable or not in the uh, long haul. Now I could get a little bit better of a score as you see here by overclocking my memory but um, I'm not going to get into it in this tutorial as it can sometimes be a little bit more hairy and uh, you'll need more voltage to get um, an overclock in your memory I found at least for my, uh, my Ryzen CPU. It may vary on your CPU. Another thing to keep an eye on when we're running at 1.45 volts is the temperatures. And you can see that our max temperature was 76 C. Um, that, is, that is acceptable, that is not too bad. Um, you wouldn't want to go much higher than that though, so I'm going to leave it at 1.45 volts, 4 gigahertz, and uh, I'm going to run the benchmarks from the beginning of the video and we'll see if it's stable and how much improvement we got. Okay, so our Blender benchmark with a 4 gigahertz overclock finished in 1 minute and 4 seconds. So that's compared to a minute 20 without the overclock. Very, very impressive. Now before overclocking, I was running at about, let me see, it was about 3.2 gigahertz on all the cores, I think is what the, uh, the stock on the Ryzen 1700 is. So that's an 800 megahertz overclock and so far it seems pretty stable. Usually Blender is a pretty good test to see if your overclock is stable because it um, it does really tax the CPU a lot when you're rendering with the CPU and uh, it rendered this fine. Okay, so our 3D Time Spy benchmark is finishing up here with the CPU test and uh, we'll have our final results in then. I just want to say a few things. Um, if you're running perfectly stable now and you've ran A to 64 for a few hours even and it's been perfectly stable, maybe you'd want to try reducing your vCore a little bit and seeing if it's still stable. That way you'll save a little bit of energy and run a little bit cooler and still have the same overclock. So that's just something you also want to do when overclocking is uh, see if you can get away with less voltage and still be stable. All right, so there we have it. Our CPU core, the CPU score, not core, <laughs> is at 8, 8,010. So that compared to our original 6,900 is a really nice increase. Okay, so now that the numbers are in, we can see that we got about a 23% increase on the multi-threaded Cinebench R15 score, 
we got about a 16% increase on the Time Spy 3D Mark gaming benchmark, you can say, and a 25% increase on the Blender benchmark scene. So that is uh, that is quite a bit better. We went up about 800 megahertz and got about 25% faster render speeds with Blender. So being a geek myself, I find this really fascinating that you can get this free performance out of your hardware with just some BIOS tweaks. Now, yes, you might be reducing the lifespan a little bit of your CPU, but to me, it's definitely worth it to get this kind of performance increase. And chances are, I won't even be using the CPU in a few years and it will still be running perfectly fine. Now, for some of you, overclocking might just be a little too scary and you might not want to deal with the crashes and stuff occasionally. But hopefully this video gave you a little bit of confidence and you're ready to go out there and try your own overclock and uh, see what kind of results you get. Just like I said, if you really want to make sure your benchmark is safe, you want to run something like ADA64 for a few hours straight or even all night long just to make sure that you don't have any crashes. Also, keep your eye out for the new video I'll be posting on how to overclock your GPU. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun and even easier than overclocking your CPU, I'd say. And you can get a nice performance boost from your GPU as well. So stay tuned for that. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Like I said, overclocking is not for everyone, and that's perfectly fine. But if you like messing with your hardware a little bit and getting some more performance out of your PC, definitely try overclocking. It's a lot of fun. It's not as scary as it sounds, and uh, you can get some really cool results. Um, I'll see you guys later in my next video. Keep on being awesome, and I'll see you later. Bye!